Serving Southern New Mexico, this is the award-winning KRWG-TV News 22, where news matters. Good evening, good evening everyone. I'm Victor Fierro. And I'm Samantha Dates. Concern over the war in Israel is having an impact here on the NMSU campus. Today, a dozen or so students demonstrated Outside the Corbett Student Union, they call themselves Students for Socialism. They held signs saying no USA to Israel to kill civilian and the one million Palestinian children deserve safety. As the war in Israel continues to rage, thousands of Americans are impacted by the unfolding conflict. Muslim communities say they are concerned about anti-Muslim bias, while others are trying to lend a helping hand to Israelis living amid the conflict. Gloria Pazmino has more. Let's take a look at our current conditions. Right now, our skies are sunny with a temperature of 85 degrees. Winds are south-southwest at 3 miles per hour. And humidity is sitting at 17%. Our dew point is 37 degrees, and our barometer is sitting just about 30.02 inches. Our high for today was a very hot 86 degrees for the middle of October. An average temperature about 78 degrees and a low of 54. Our record temperatures for today were from 2020 with a high of 89 degrees and from 1966 with a low of 33 degrees. We had no rain today, no precipitation, leaving our yearly total at 4.92 inches. Let's take it back to the desk for some more news. One teen has been arrested after allegedly shooting two other teenage boys. Police responded to reports of two separate shootings over the weekend. Police, police found the body of one teenager on October 14th, while two teenagers got into an altercation that led to the October 15th shooting. Police interviewed several teenagers involved in the incident, but didn't file any charges. The investigation is currently active, and police have asked anyone who knows anything or may have witnessed the incident to call them at 575-526-0795. A Mexican-American icon visited Las Cruces at the school that carries her name. 93-year-old Dolores Huerta was at the Dolores Huerta Charter Middle School yesterday. Huerta worked alongside Cesar Chavez when he organized the United Farm Workers of America. The school focuses on teaching students Mexican-American culture through performing arts. Students welcomed her by performing her favorite songs. Well, I feel very honored uh, to be here at the Dolores Huerta Academy for performing arts. Uh, this is one of the second schools in, in the nation that was named after me. And I love music, I love dancing, and to see uh, what the students are being taught here and the great uh, teachers that they have, because I know that music and dancing, it, this is what lifts our spirits, you know. Whatever's happening in our lives, uh, we need art and we need music uh, to, to fulfill our spirits and keep us going. After the performances, Huerta shared a few words of encouragement to students finally. Students and members of the community were able to meet and talk to her. Stay tuned, Anaya will be back with your national forecast. I'm Eric Johnson, host of Garden Smart. Each week we travel the country north to south, east to west, exploring some of the most exciting gardens, as well as talking to industry horticulturalists about design principles, new plants, and also how you can be more successful with your home garden. Saturday at 2.30 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. Time to eat. Mm. <laughs> There's so much flavor, it's almost hard to believe. When a dish is simple and it has complex flavors, that's the holy grail. This really is so much more than the sum of its parts. It's like chicken soup for the soul, but with way more flavor. There are few things in life that exceed expectations. Definitely a big step up. This is seriously one of my favorite things to cook. Man, that was good. Magic <laughs> is definitely going to happen now. Saturday at 4.30 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. The New Mexico Department of Health is addressing a rising public health crisis. Last year, the DOH reported a 660% increase in cases of syphilis, a sexually transmitted disease that can lead to serious health defects. New Mexico ranks second nationally for congenital syphilis rates. The order directs medical professionals to increase testing specifically for pregnant women. Syphilis transmission from mother to child can result in significant birth defects and infant mortality. Survivors of domestic violence are having their say at NMSU's Corbett Student Center. All this afternoon, people were able to walk in to see hundreds of specifically designed t-shirts containing messages or of hope. 
It's called Project Clothesline and it's sponsored by the Department of Criminal Justice. From 9 this morning until 5 this afternoon, students could come in and read the messages of solidarity. I think it's very, it's a very powerful thing, right? Because sometimes people, all they need to do is come in and look at somebody's shirt. They don't have to volunteer. They look at somebody's shirt and maybe that's the closure they need or, you know, that's the sign for them to get out of a situation. I think that there's a lot of stuff that gets unsaid, especially um, with a lot of um, men that come in with, with stories. Um, so I think that it, it helps um, it helps build a community and build a community that's safe to speak about those issues. Criminal justice professor Dennis Giever hopes to grow the display and share it with other organizations in Las Cruces so many more can see it. Well, it looks like there are tropical storms heading into the country. I would love to know more about that. Anaya, what can you tell us? Definitely. Let's take a look at this tropical map storm. So we do have a new tropical storm forming in the Pacific called Norma. And Norma will bring rains into the United States, but unfortunately, none for us here in southern New Mexico. As you can see right here, this is where the rains will mostly fall down through the middle of Texas, Oklahoma, and up towards the Midwest but these steering winds take it right above and right away from southern New Mexico. We do have much colder temperatures over here in the upper southwest region and the Midwest. Not the Midwest, the Midwestern region. If we go to my next map, we can see the winds for today and around this time too. We can see some heavy winds blowing through Montana and Wyoming going real fast and then we also see some winds going up through the Midwest. And if we go to my next map, um, it's the middle of October and fall, but apparently southern United States doesn't know that. Uh, down here in the southwest, we have some super hot temperatures, especially down in Phoenix with a high of 98. And again, in Amarillo, Texas with 85. It's very warm despite it being October 17th, which I think is just crazy. But we do see some cooler temperatures up north and over towards the northeast, we do see some a lot cooler temperatures. Looking at the next map, we see some rain and snow for the next 48 hours, none down here in the southwest region of the United States, but there is some in the upper, upper Midwest. And they'll see about an inch of rain, and that'll be it. Uh, all of Michigan seems to be like, seems to see the, some rain, and that's it. Don't go anywhere, I'll be back with your local forecast. If you look hard enough, go off the beaten track far enough, you'll find an America teeming with the unusual, the odd, the downright strange. I'm Will Klinger, and I'm your guide on a package tour we like to call Wild Travels. Wednesday at 2.30 on KRWG Public Media. The PBS NewsHour has a rich legacy. People turn to us because they can hear from trusted sources of information and news. That won't change a bit, even as the faces behind the desk change. Good evening, I'm Jeff Bennett. And I'm Amna Nawaz. Weekday afternoons at 5.30 on KRWG Public Media. KRWG TV's public file is available at 2915 McPhee Circle in Milton Hall, Room 117 on the campus of New Mexico State University. Regular business hours are from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 1 to 5 p.m. weekdays. You can also view the file online at publicfiles.fcc.gov. Welcome back. Let's take a look at our local temperatures. Up in Farmington, it's about 78 degrees. Gallup has a degrees of 80 degrees. Santa Fe, 72. Albuquerque, almost 80 at 79. Clovis, 82. Socorro, again at 82. Rio Doso, 77 degrees. Roswell, 86. A very hot 85 here in Las Cruces. And a warm 84 in Deming. Taking a look at our temperatures for tomorrow, Farmington will have a high of 81 degrees. Gallup, a high of 82. Santa Fe, a lower temp of 77 degrees. Albuquerque, a high of 82. Clovis, a high of 79. Socorro, a high of 86. Ridoso, 78. Roswell, a very hot 92. And Demi and Las Cruces are both sitting at a very warm 90 for the middle of October. Moving on, let's look at Alamogordo's night sky conditions. Alamogordo will see nice clear skies with a low of 53 tonight. 
and tomorrow they'll have nice, bright, sunny, sh sunny and shiny skies with an 88 as the high. In truth or consequences, they will again have nice clear skies tonight, just in case they want to look at the moon. It's beautiful tonight with a low of 54 degrees. Tomorrow, nice clear sunny skies in case they want to go run in a field and enjoy the hot weather of 90 degrees as the high for tomorrow. And Silver City, you have a clear, uh, clear skies with 52 as the low and tomorrow a nice bright 84. And in Las Cruces, we have clear skies with 54 degrees and a high of 90 tomorrow with nice, clear, sunny skies. Let's head back to the desk for some more news. And it looks like the Battle of I-10 is right around the corner. What can you tell us more about that, Jose? Um, That's right, Vic. And MSU football is looking for their first win against UTEP since 2019. You can toss that remote because News 22 Sports is next. We're on the road again for another great season of weekends with Yankee. As always, we'll serve up mouth-watering dishes from the region's best chefs. That is so good. See the work of some amazing artisans and take you on adventures you won't want to miss. Have this kind of view. It's something special. So join us, won't you, for Weekends with Yankee. It's the ultimate insider's guide to New England. Saturday at 8 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. For season 10 in the Americas, a safe haven for baby whales and their moms, a sanctuary for jaguars, colossal volcanic explosions and slick rock mazes, the dying living inland sea of California, the ancient ones of the Southwest. In Spain, Columbus comes to life along with his critics. Cortez brings Europe to Mexico. All of this, season 10 of In the Americas with David Yetman. This is KRWG-TV News 22 Sports. Welcome back. I'm Jose Munoz and let's talk sports. The MSU women's soccer had their winning streak on the line at home this past weekend. The Aggies faced off against Florida International in a tight match, ending in a 1-1 draw. Within the first five minutes, FIU scored the first goal, while the Aggies got Loma McNeese open for the tying goal. The rest of the match was a defensive battle, the FIU goalie against the NMSU strikers. The Aggies look ahead to their last home game of the season against Sam Houston on Sunday at 1. You can catch the match on ESPN+. This past weekend, NMSU volleyball faced their toughest opponent yet and it ended in a sweep. The Aggies took on Western Kentucky in hopes to be the first team to defeat the Hilltoppers. Western Kentucky had other plans, beating the Aggies both days by 3-0 sets, containing their undefeated dominance in conference play. The Aggies are traveling to play Jacksonville State this weekend on Friday at 5 and Saturday at noon. You can catch the match on ESPN+. And that's all for sports tonight. Join us for more sports action tomorrow. Still ahead on News 22, Amai will be back to look at your five-day forecast. Deep beneath the Cumberland Mountains in Grundy County, Tennessee, lies the Cavern Sessions. Center stage inside the mountain, welcoming roots, rock, folk, soul, and Americana. The Cavern Sessions. Saturday at 10 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. Get plugged in to what's coming down the road. Whether you're ready for a new ride or need your drive expert advice, turn to Motor Week every week with me, John Davis. Saturday morning at 11.30 on KRWG Public Media. Hello, I'm Consuelo Mack. Every week on Wealth Track, we sit down with great investors and financial thought leaders to talk in depth about strategies you need to build and protect your wealth over the long term. Join us on Consuelo Mack Wealth Track. Sunday at 2 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. And let's take it to Anaya for your, a look at your five-day forecast. Taking a look at your five-day forecast, on Wednesday, tomorrow, we have bright sunny skies with a high of 88 and a low of 53. Thursday, sunny skies with a high of 90 and a low of 54. Friday, sunny skies, high of 89, low of 56. Saturday, we'll see some clouds in the sky with mostly sunny skies with a high of 90 and a low of 55. And Sunday, we'll have a high of 90 with nice sunny skies and a low of 52. Let's head back to the desk. 
And that's all for, for News 22 Tuesday. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Tune in tomorrow night for more news. I'm Victor Fierro. And I'm Samantha Dates. And from the whole News 22 team, Victor, Anaya, Jose, and myself, good night. This news brief in Espanol is brought to you by Noticias 22, Spanish language news for Southern New Mexico and West Texas. Noticias 22. Buen día, soy Jorge Fonseca con las pruebas de Noticias 22. La policía de Las Cruces continúa investigando dos tiroteos separados que ocurrieron durante el fin de semana y que tomaron la vida de dos jóvenes. El primer tiroteo ocurrió poco antes de las 10 de la mañana del pasado sábado en la calle Bella, ubicada en la Mesa del Este. Cuando oficiales llegaron a la escena, encontraron a un niño de 14 años que sufría al menos una herida de bala. Fue, tra fue transportado al Centro Médico Regional Mont Pío, donde sucumbió sus heridas. Un joven de 15 años fue identificado como el tirador de en este incidente. Es acusado de un cargo de homicidio involuntario y un cargo de posesión ilegal de un arma de fuego. Luego, el, el domingo del alrededor de las 4 de la tarde, Unidades policíacas fueron enviadas al estacionamiento del Deal Caesars Pizza, ubicada en la calle Main y Three Crosses, donde un joven de 16 años había recibido un disparo. El joven fue trasladado a un hospital cercano donde, donde sucumbió sus heridas. La causa de este último suceso fue, fue debido a una discusión por parte de la víctima y el atacante. A pesar de que varios jóvenes han sido entrevistados por investigadores respecto a la situación, aún no se sabe no, aún no se presentan cargos hacia un, algún sospechoso. Cualquier persona que tenga información sobre cualquiera de los dos casos o que haya presenciado cualquiera de los hechos debe llamar al número que, está, que aparece en pantalla. Esto ha sido todo por mi parte. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos el día de hoy. No duden en seguirnos en nuestras redes sociales, YouTube, Facebook, X. Hasta pronto.